Hello, and welcome to a Spider Strategies free training monthly webinar. It is March of 2019, and this month's topic is replacing users in QuickScore, or as I like to paraphrase it, oh boy, Bob is leaving our company, and now I'll need Jane to do what Bob does in QuickScore. How do I do that? And allow me to pause real quickly and share with you that that was a real question around a legitimate real scenario that one of our customers has recently faced, and it became the genesis, again, for this month's topic, which is replacing users in QuickScore. My name is Tom Keating, and I'm a training and customer experience consultant here at Spider Strategies. I'm pleased and honored to be your host and presenter today for this webinar. And please take a minute, if you'd like, to note my personal uh, email at tom.keating at spiderstrategies.com and use it if you have any follow-up questions regarding this webinar or any other education or customer experience issues with our QuickScore solution. Let's forge ahead and take a look at our agenda for today's webinar. We'll be talking about two basic methods for uh, replacing users in QuickScore. The first method one is simply changing a username for an existing user account in QuickScore. The second method is creating a new user account and assigning permissions and responsibilities appropriately to that new user. Let's start with discussing, introducing and discussing method number one, which is changing the username for an existing user account. There's a key concept behind user accounts in QuickScore, which is that every user account in QuickScore has a unique system user ID which is how QuickScore really, if you will, sees and identifies any given user. The personal user name that is shown in many and various areas of QuickScore, such as notes or reports, or history logs, et cetera, is simply a more palatable or personalized alias for the underlying unique system user ID. QuickScore permissions, access rights, ownership, update and assignee responsibilities are all tied to the unique system user ID, not the, the user name. Now, if you want to transfer everything that the QuickScore system has assigned to a given existing unique user um, system, uh, system ID, I should say, to a new person, you can just change the name and the login properties for the existing user account. Now let me focus on the capitalized word everything there, because when we say everything, we mean everything. And it includes things like the user group membership, which is how a given user uh, acquires uh, permissions that come from their group membership. The user also acquires access and vi visibility rights to organizations within QuickScore that come again from their membership in user groups. It again includes everything from the home page, including alert subscriptions, measure ownership responsibilities, measure update responsibilities, and tasks for initiative responsibilities, as well as the bookmarks library of easily accessible applications that a given user may have established for him or herself. Now there are some advantages to using this method number one, the first being that it's very fast and easy to do. You simply change the existing user profile and you're done. Another advantage, if you wanna perceive it this way, is that the new user gets everything the old user was set up to do and see and was responsible for. Now, with regard to any disadvantages to this first method, number one, of just changing the name, you'll note here that the first disadvantage is the exact same as the last advantage, which is the new user gets everything the old user was set up to do and see and was responsible for. And this begs the question to consider is, should the new user really take on everything from the old user or not? And secondarily, another disadvantage is a complete loss of the previous existing user's name everywhere in QuickScore, including a loss of that name in any kind of historical perspective or records of what that original user did leaving you with really no way to delineate the original user's activities from the new user's activities in QuickScore. Now with that introduction covered, let's jump into a quick demonstration of changing the username for our man Bob to his new replacement, Jane, in QuickScore. I'll bring up QuickScore 
and start by logging in as Bob so you can see what Bob's experience is at the present time. Having logged in as Bob, I've landed up at his, of course, personalized homepage, and we'll just review what Bob sees as we go here from right to left on the homepage, starting with Bob's responsibilities, where he owns three different measures, book revenue, product revenue, and training revenue. Moving down the responsibilities, he's responsible as an updater for six different measures, those same measures we just saw, product revenue, training revenue, book revenue, as well as from the marketing organization, ad clicks, campaign email sent, and leads. Furthermore, in Bob's responsibilities area, he has been set up as an assignee for a task uh, that is tied to an initiative in the financial organization to develop training internally. Again, on the homepage, Bob has also subscribed to a variety of different alerts. So he has some alerts presented here in the middle of his homepage. If we want to review Bob's existing alert subscriptions, we can dive into the alerts area and in the upper right hand corner, click edit subscriptions to review what Bob has voluntarily subscribed to, which is alerts looking for training revenue to be informed if the measure value change is below or equal to 150,000. For product revenue, he wants to know if any notes are added. And for uh, revenue, whether the score change is at or below five. Lastly, from the homepage, just to continue our reflection on Bob's present uh, quick score experience, is in the bookmarks area or section of quick score, Bob has set himself up with five different applications that he has immediate, quick and easy access to a financial overview dashboard a financial overview report, a marketing report, an increase ad, cl ad clicks dashboard, and lastly, a revenue performance over time chart. So that is just a reflection on, on Bob's experience uh, as a quick score user. And what we'd like to do is use the first method one of just changing the username for Bob to Jane. To accomplish that, I need to log out as Bob and log in as an administrative power user who has the rights and capabilities to create and edit and adjust properties on users within QuickScore. Now logged in as that administrative power user, I'll go to the settings or administrative control panel of QuickScore. Under the security area or section of the settings pane, I'll click users and we'll find our user Bob that we just looked at or investigated. I'll click on Bob's user account, and over on the right, I'll see all of the various uh, properties that have been set up for Bob. And what we'll do very quickly and easily here is just change the username from Bob to Jane. We'll change the email address to be jane at gmail.com, and then we'll uh, set this up as easily as possible with a first name of Jane, a last name, again, of Jane, and we'll create a password for Jane, and we'll retype that password for Jane. While we're in here, let's also just take note that uh, Bob was assigned as a member of the group of finance and marketing. At this point, I'll click save to save the changes that we made for that existing user account, again, which is all tied back to a unique user ID. And what we want to do is go and see what Jane's experience is now within QuickScore. So I'll again log out as the administrative power user that made the changes. Let's just uh, try logging in as Bob and see if by any chance Bob is still able to get into QuickScore. And of course, not surprisingly, he's unable to log in. He's presenting an invalid username and password combination. Let's try logging in instead as Jane the newly defined username for that same user account. And sure enough, Jane is able to log in and land at now her personal homepage. And what I'd ask you to reflect here is, as you might expect, based on what we discussed and described as the implications of changing the username, is that Jane has now inherited everything that Bob saw before. So if you look at Jane's homepage under, again, the responsibilities area, you will, of course, see the same exact three measures that she is an owner of, book, product, and training revenue, the same 
uh, measures that she is responsible now for updating of the revenue numbers as well as the marketing measures. If we look at the tasks area, Jane has now been assigned as an, as an updater and assignee to the initiative of develop training internally. Of course, within the alerts area, if we again look at the alerts that are existing and the subscriptions that have been set up, they are the exact same things that Bob established for himself. And lastly, in the bookmarks library of applications easily accessible now to Jane, they are the same exact five applications, reports, and graphs, and dashboards that Bob investigated and had quick and easy access to. Now, um, let us take a, just a quick look at some deeper implications of this change that we made. I'll go into the measures that Jane is now responsible for updating, and we'll dive into or drill into the product revenue measure. And if we are in the scorecard view of the product revenue measure, and I go to the bottom here where there are some notes. I'll click show notes to present the notes pane. And we'll see that there are a couple notes, one of which is a note from user one that is an all time note, which was originally authored by Bob, but it is now being reflected as Jane as the author of that note. Now, Jane is not the original author of the note, but again, as I alluded to earlier, Jane has inherited everything that Bob set up, including the system's understanding that she was the author of this note. Similarly, if we look at the history behind this product revenue measure and investigate all events that have occurred with this product revenue measure over time, we'll see that Jane at the very bottom now has some um, events that are indicated that she took, even though she was only just created um, today. So there is a, an event here that the uh, amount for product revenue, the actual uh, value was changed on March 20th by Jane. But as you know, today is actually March 21st. So Jane did not exist as a user on March 20th, nor did she exist back on March 14th or March 16th, or uh, March 14th when other uh, changes were made to this product revenue measure. Now that is enough of a problem in terms of historical logging of actual um, actions taken by users, and that's unacceptable, then you would need to move on to the second method of replacing a user with a new user. And in our case, we would like to be able to investigate that second process, so I'm going to revert this user, um, which is now of course set up as Jane, I'm gonna log back in as our administrative power user, and we will revert the ownership of that user ID back to Bob so that that's in place when we investigate our second method of um, changing user ownership within uh, QuickScore. So here, logged in as that administrative user, I'll again return to the users area, we'll find our newly defined Jane Jane, and we'll revert Jane back to Bob. Change the email, and again, we'll just quickly do a bunch of copying and pasting here to change the first name back to Bob, and the last name back to Bob, and again, provide Bob's password, and click Save. Okay, let's rever uh, go back to my presentation deck to introduce now the second method of replacing a user within QuickScore. We've covered method one, changing the username. The next method here is again to create a new user account and then assign permissions and responsibilities to that new user account appropriately. In terms of introducing this second method, there again are some advantages to this second method. The first being that the end result of this process is a new unique QuickScore system user that is customized to the needs and wants of the new person. And that new user is not, if you will, subjected to everything the old user was set up to do and see and was responsible for. And then also very importantly, the system log retention of all the old usernames historical participation and contribution within QuickScore. The disadvantage to using method number two is really just the time and effort required to go in and review all the old users ownership, 
update and task responsibilities that are visible and available on the home page. Also reviewing and confirming the old users group memberships and the permissions and access that come along with that membership. The uh, time and effort to create the new user from scratch and to assign appropriate groups so that the new user again acquires appropriate permissions and data access. And lastly, to manually, manually assign measure ownership and updater responsibilities, or to take another approach of creating a report to achieve something like that en masse, which I will be covering with you, and also to manually assign uh, the new user to appropriate tasks. Okay, so with that introduction in hand, let's get into a demonstration of creating Jane as a new user and assigning her to Bob's responsibilities. Once again, I'll bring up Quick Score. And at this point, I'm presently logged in as the administrative user. And so I wanna log back out and just walk through the process that we recommend in uh, creating a new, new user that will be replacing an old user. We'll start by logging in as the old user. Now, we've already gone through a process earlier here in this session where I showed you all of the measures that Bob owns all the measures that he updates and all of his tasks. So I will not belabor that, but I will recommend that you take the time to uh, recognize and document the ownership, update, and task responsibilities that any particular existing user has so that you know what you need to, again, to assign to the new user that you will replace. It's also wise to investigate and just, you know, become aware of whatever alerts the previous user has set up Again, the new user is not going to be, if you will, subjected to all of the alert subscriptions that the, that the old user had set up. But again, it might be helpful just to be aware of those in case the new user, again, wants to replicate some of those alerts. And then lastly, again, I would recommend just taking note of the contents of the old user's bookmarks library, again, in the spirit that the new user, if they're gonna be you know, acquiring the same types of responsibilities, there may be applications that will be very helpful for them to have quick and immediate access to via that new user's personal uh, library of applications in their, in their bookmarks area. Okay, so what we want to do at this point is after acknowledging everything that we can about Bob, we're going to go in and create a new user of Jane. So to do that, again, I need to log out as Bob and again log back in as that power user with the administrative capabilities to create and administer users. And once again, we'll go to the settings administrative console. We'll find the users section under security and we'll create a new uh, user. So in this case, I'll click add and we'll create the new user of Jane. And we'll give Jane an email address here, jane at gmail.com. We'll give her the first name of Jane, the last name of Jane, and set her up with a unique password. Now, you recall earlier that we, when we looked at Bob, we noticed or took, took note, and I should have done that here just a minute ago, but it's to go in and investigate what Bob's um, gr user group membership was all about because user groups define what type of access and permissions a, a user within QuickScore is provided. So what we want to do here is add a group <laughs> and the group is the same group that we saw earlier that Bob was a member of which was the finance and marketing group. So at this point Bob has been or sorry Jane has been established as a new user with a unique username and all of her unique personal uh, properties and has been added as a member of the finance and marketing group. Um, if we want to investigate what finance and marketing is all about while we're in here, I'll click save and then click on finance and marketing just so that you're clear on what Jane is effectively inheriting as a member of that finance and marketing group. Within the finance and marketing group, it has been set up as a group type of communication users. The other types are power users and viewers, but this is a communication users group. The permissions that are provided to members of that communication users finance and marketing group are presented here. I won't read them all to you, 
but you can see that Jane will not be allowed to necessarily view all organizations within the larger mobile world corporate structure, but she does have plenty of, of capabilities or permissions within the view area, the initiatives area, documents, and other. Also to take note of for this finance and marketing group is within the organization area, this group has been provided with access to the financial organization, the marketing organization, and the Mobile World Inc. organization. And again, it's important to understand that users inherit their system permissions and their system access to organizations and data via, again, the permissions in advance and the permissions provided under an organization set up within the group uh, that they are a member of. Okay, at this point, Jane again has been set up as a member of that finance and marketing group. We will then log out as the administrative power user who just created Jane, and we'll try logging in again as Jane and see what her experience is like at the present time. <laughs> So Jane is able to, again, to success, successfully log into QuickScore. You'll note that on her homepage, it's pretty much blank. There are no measures that she owns. There are no measures that she updates. There are no tasks that she's been assigned to. She doesn't have any alerts. If we go to the bookmarks section, none have been defined or created within her bookmarks private library. So she's effectively a brand new user here in QuickScore. But one thing that is important to also take note of based on her membership in that finance and marketing group, she is able to access the organizations and the underlying scorecards for the Mobile, Wor Mobile World Inc. organization, the financial organization, and the marketing organization, okay? From here then, it's a question of getting Jane set up with the appropriate responsibilities that we want her to take over for Bob. To do that, again, I'm going to need to log off as Jane and log back in as, an, uh, as a power user, again, with the access and control to be able to provide Jane with um, ownership and update her responsibilities and assign her to tasks. So again, logged back in as that power user. What we can do, and again, having taken note of and acknowledged and documenting what roles and responsibilities Jane should have, we can begin to assign her to the measures that we want her to become an owner or an updater of. The first couple measures are within the financial organization. So I'll open up the financial organization. <clears throat> we'll expand the financial profit and loss scorecard and take note that under the revenue theme, we have product revenue, training revenue, and book revenue. And hopefully you remember that those were measures that Bob was responsible for as an owner and an updater. So as an example of how to set up Jane as an owner and updater for product revenue, I'll select the product revenue measure, click the edit button at the bottom of the black navigation pane to get into edit mode on product revenue. I'll scroll to the bottom of the product revenues properties where we have a listing of owners and updaters. And there, of course, you see Bob as an owner and as an updater. So we'll add a new owner, which will be, of course, Jane. And we'll also set Jane up as an updater. So again, add an updater. Again, it'll be Jane. Now, while we're in here, um, we may want to remove Bob. A little bit later in our session, I will actually be deleting the Bob user. So removing or deleting Bob from here is a little bit redundant, but just to show you that it can be done here within a measures properties interface, I'll go ahead and delete Bob as an owner, and I'll delete Bob as an updater of the product revenue measure. Towards the lower right-hand corner, I'll click Save to save those recent changes to product revenue. And then I'll click Done. All right, so after that, uh, what we then wanna do is also assign Jane um, as, an, as an assignee to an initiative. And again, I'll show you in just a minute how to establish ownership and update responsibilities by Jane for the remainder of Bob's measures through a, a report and a, and, a, and a mass edit capability within QuickScore. Before we get there, let's just attack the initiatives because initiatives do need to be assigned manually. So I'll go to the initiatives area, again, within the financial organization, 
you hopefully recall that Bob had been previously assigned to a task which was tied to the Develop Training Internally initiative. So similar to what we just did with the product revenue measure, we will edit this Develop Training Internally initiative. Again, look towards the bottom of the properties for this initiative. Again, acknowledge here that Bob is presently set up as an assignee to this initiative. And of course, we'll add another user, which will be Jane. And once again, while we're in here, we will remove or delete Bob from any responsibility, assignment responsibility, to the Develop Training Internally initiative. And we'll click Save. So after making those, and I'll, then I'll click Done to get out of edit mode. So after making those simple changes and adding Jane as an owner and an updater for one measure and one initiative, let's again just pause here for a second and review the results of that. So once again, I'm going to log out and again log on. Whoops, I log on again as the administrative power user. Oops, sorry, no, that's not what I meant. I'm gonna log on as Jane is what I mean to do. And we'll log on as Jane and see what Jane now experiences on her homepage. So as you might expect, in the responsibilities area over towards the right for Jane, we can now see that she is an owner of that product revenue measure. And again, she of course can drill into it and investigate it and work with it, what have you. She also is an updater of that exact same product revenue measure. And lastly, she has been assigned to the, a task uh, tied to the develop training internally initiative. Now that's all great and it's well and good and an easy way to set Jane up as an updater and an owner uh, and, a, and a, an assignee to task. But imagine that Bob has far more measures that he was either an owner or an updater for and to do uh, make those types of changes uh, manually can be get, become quite tedious and time consuming to make, you know, let's say hundreds of changes. To that end, I want to share with you a capability within QuickScore to do what we call a mass edit of ownership and updater responsibilities uh, within QuickScore. To do so, again, I'm going to need to log back out and log on again as a different user with more capabilities than Jane has been set up with. And this is accomplished in the charts and reports area. What we're effectively going to do is create a report going to find what measures Bob is either the owner of or the updater for within our entire Mobile World Inc. organization. So we're looking everywhere within all of the sub uh, organizations and everything within Mobile World. And we want to find, the uh, again, the measures that Bob is an owner of or an updater for. So we'll create a new report and it will, we will employ the report writer. Click Next. We're looking for measures. So again, we'll just go after their name. We wanna know who the owners are for all the measures we'll be pulling. And we wanna know who the updaters are for all the measures that we're gonna pull in this report. Click Next. We're gonna to need to create some filters to focus our attention purely on the measures that Bob is responsible for. So we'll click Add. And we're going to be filtering on, first of all, owners. Now, the filter we're going to set up here is that we're looking for a specific user or group that is tied to, as an owner to particular measures within the system. Okay? And what we're going to do is look for measures that are owned by our man, Bob, and click Done. So we've set one filter on this report, which is owners, any of the following of Bob. Then we'll add another filter where in this case, we're looking for updaters, again, who are Bob. So again, we're looking for a specific user or group. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. We'll set up the name, of course, of Bob. Now, before I forge ahead and click Done, I do wanna clarify that I'm setting up this sec second filter criteria as an or criteria, right? I'm not, I'm not looking only for measures that Bob is both the owner and the updater. I'm looking for measures where Bob is either the owner or he's the updater. So in this case, after setting that up appropriately, I'll click done. We now have our two different filters set up. Owner is Bob or updater is Bob. And I'll click get report. 
and I'm returned with a simple little report with the five different measures that Bob is either an owner of or an updater of. And again, these names hopefully are a bit familiar to you now based on what we saw earlier in, in terms of Bob and his, his responsibilities. There's the training revenue and the book revenue from the financial area or organization. And there's the ad clicks, the campaign, campaign email sent, and the leads from the marketing area. And you see that Bob is the owner of training and book revenue, but he's the updater for all five. Now, the beauty here is not only the intelligence of knowing now what Bob is the owner and the updater of, but we also, if you look to the lower right-hand corner, have the capability to define a mass edit of these measures. So I'll click mass edit. And what we're going to first do is change the updaters for all five of these. So towards the upper left, I'll click the little gray box, which will put a check next to all five of the measures in this report. And towards the lower right-hand corner, I'll click the Edit Selected Items button. And what we want to do is change, in this case, the owners for all those measures. Note that in terms of the action here, there are basically two choices. You're going to add a new owner, owner or you're going to remove an existing owner. In our case, what we'll do is add a new owner, who is, of course, Jane. And then let me just verify that I see that set up. Uh, Jane, yep. Yeah. Okay, so owner is adding. And then I'll click Save. Okay, now please take note at the top, in blue, it's telling, QuickScore is telling us that five objects have been successfully modified. The report that we're presently viewing has not yet been up updated to show the changes that were made. But when you're done, click done, and then it will reflect to you visually the, the updates that you asked for. Before we click done, though, we also want to change um, the uh, ownership, right? Um, we just did owners. So we want to do updaters. Oop, what did we just do? Um, okay. Um, I did all five. Okay. So in this case, we're just going to do two. Okay. And we'll change the owners. I did the owners. I want to do updaters in this case. Sorry. Hold on. Got a little confused. We're going to do, we'll do all five and see what we can do here. And we'll change, we'll edit these selected items by changing the updaters. Okay. Again, the choices are either to add or remove. Again, in this case, we'll add the user of Jane. And then we'll click save. Okay, so again, five objects, again, successfully modified. I hope I did that right. And we'll click done and see what the result is. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I got a little confused on what I had done first, whether updating or owners. But the net net in the end here, guys, is that you see that in terms of owners and updaters, Jane is now there for all five of these, um, these measures within QuickScore. And at that point, we'll log back out as the administrative user. Uh, sorry, I'll say, I don't need to save the change. I don't need to save that report. It has done what I need it to do behind the scenes. I don't need to retain that report as a saved report. So I'll log out as the administrative user and we'll log back on as Jane. And now let's see what Jane is responsible for. So I made it a little bit different than what Bob had been responsible for because I made Jane the owner of all six of the measures, but hopefully it still conveys the point that as of now, Jane has been set up as the owner of all six of those measures that we just saw in the report. She's also been set up as the updater of all of those measures. And of course, we already established the, uh, the task that she was responsible for with regard to the initiative of uh, establishing internal training. Now, let's take a look at the result here of, of having set up Jane as, as a new user and her capability to provide some kind of update and then maybe add a note and then let's look at the history. So what I'll do is go to the measures I update as Jane. I'll move ahead in terms of my ca calendar period selector into March of 2019 where I have not yet provided any values for the measures that I update. And we'll set up the product revenue with the strong performance of 480,000. Also, while I'm here, I'm gonna go to the notes area and we'll add a note, okay? And this will just be called note from Jane. 
and I'll add that note. And then I'll click close. And then I'll update the measures. Okay, so that has been achieved. Again, it's showing a green strong performance here for product revenue for March of 2019. Let's then dive into product revenue and see what we see in terms of the note and the history behind this product revenue measure. So now that I'm in the scorecard view of product revenue, I'll expand the notes pane at the bottom. We do, of course, see the existence of the new note from Jane. And if I click on it, it is, of course, accurately reflecting that Jane is in fact the author of that new note. If we go to the older note that was a note, you know, that was established back in the day by Bob, we see that Bob is still being reflected as the author of that note. You will recall earlier that when we simply changed the username, it actually adopted Jane as the author of the note, even though she had not been the author of that note. So it is correctly identifying the actual uh, authors of the distinct notes. Furthermore, with regard to history behind this product revenue measure, if I click on the history log for product revenue and take a look at all events and scroll to the very bottom of all the many events that have occurred with product revenue over time, we see that the most recent change of the actual value of 480,000 was of course provided by Jane and the fact that she also added a note. And if we scroll up and see what did Bob do recently, we do still have the retention of Bob as the user who provided, whether it be different notes or different actual values previously in history. So that's a grand advantage of using the applying and creating a new user and applying, uh, giving that new, new user the appropriate responsibilities. Okay. Um, so that covers the general paradigm of creating the new user. One last step that I am going to take here just to reflect with you so you can see the end result of deleting a user that has been, you know, replaced by a different new user. Because some people are curious about, well, what happens if I actually say, well, Bob is done. He's retired. He's never coming back. And I actually would like to remove him as a user in the system. And what type of implications does that have? So this will be our last step here in this demonstration. I'll need to, again, log off as Jane. And again, log back in as that power user with appropriate administrative capabilities. Again, to add and in this case, delete users. So logged on as that power user. Once again, we'll navigate into the settings and the administrative console and go once again into the users area. And we'll find our friend Bob. And Bob, as I said, has retired. We wish him well. Let's go ahead and remove him as a user permanently from QuickScore. To do so, you simply highlight that username, go to the bottom of the page or the screen, and select delete. When I delete Bob, it's a kind of a significant change, so the system is going to ask me to confirm that I really want to delete Bob, and I will click delete to effectively say, yes, I want to delete Bob. Now, Bob is gone. Let's take a look again at the results of Bob no longer even being a user in QuickScore. To do so, once again, I'll log out as the administrative user one last time, and again, log back on again one last time as Jane. Whoops. And take a look at what Jane sees down in the product revenue measure now with Bob deleted as a user. So we'll go into measures I update and navigate into product revenue and go, I'm gonna move ahead into February. I note here at the bottom that there's, it's showing notes, but there, and there are only two. So the question is, where did Jane's note go? Well, she applied her note to March. So in the upper right-hand corner, I'll just navigate up forward into March. So there I do see, of course, the note from Jane, which is untouched, uh, it's pristine as it was a minute ago. Let's take a look at that note that was created by Bob. And you see that it is no longer indicating here in the note that Bob was the author of the note. It is indicating now that it is a removed user, not specifically indicating Bob. So that is one implication of completely deleting Bob is that you're going to lose access to his name in terms of the author of notes. Um, but with regard to history, if I go to the history log, again, for product revenue that we've looked at now a couple times, and again, scroll to the very bottom, 
again, we'll see the records that we just saw. And note that for the actions that Bob took when he was a user, it is now being indicated as a removed user, but again, retaining the presentation of Bob by his username, his previously employed username. Okay, so hopefully that is all clear. Again, this is a point in these webinars where I, I wish I could pause and ask questions to see if anyone has any and if everything is clear, but lacking that ability, I'll go back to our presentation and just review with you what we've done today here in this webinar. Um, our agenda, again, was to discuss and introduce changing a username for an existing account as method one to replace a user, and the second method of creating a new user account and assigning permissions and responsibilities appropriately. Um, before I let you go, I'd ask you to please uh, join us again next month in April for our next free QuickScore training webinar. And lastly, I'd like to thank you for being here and watching. And again, invite you to contact me at any time. Again, my name is Tom Keating. I'm a training and customer experience consultant here at Spider Strategies. And you can contact me at tom.keating at spiderstrategies.com or you can contact our education department at learn at spiderstrategies.com. Thank you again for attending. Have a great day.